Can you believe we're going all the way back? <laughs> I can't, man. It's not even a whole year later. <laughs> and we are working our way all the way back to Texas to Hennessy Performance to see something very special. We have we have returned here to Hennessy all the way down here in Texas and this time they have a lot more vehicles since the last time we were here all the way back in February I believe it was but today we're here because they are allowing me the opportunity to basically kind of shop around for something else in their large fleet of vehicles. I mean, you guys may not have known this, but Hennessy makes a lot more than just the Exorcist and the F5. They have a lot more different vehicles and today we're going to have three vehicles that all have a thousand horsepower each. We're going to compare them, see what I think, see if it could be a contender for possibly something else in the garage and just get my reactions because I'm just a little Seattle boy that, you know, tinkers around with his less than 500 horsepower mobiles and today we're, we're doing it big in Texas. So we're starting out with this right here. This is their Hennessy 1000 horsepower Cadillac CT5V Blackwing. So if you guys are unfamiliar with the Blackwing, because I had only heard of it, but I never really understood what it was, it essentially is, pop the hood over here. So right here, this is not only Hennessy's package on top, but deep down, it is an LT4, which is essentially, this car has the whole powertrain that comes in my Camaro ZL1 or any current 6th gen ZL1. Now added on top of that, you have Hennessy's 1000 horsepower. So to summarize it short, it's an Exorcist, but in the form of a Cadillac. Now that might sound worse than an Exorcist, but hear me out, okay? You got doors back here, <laughs> more room for more passengers. In the front, you have like, I mean, just look at these seats. Look yeah, at these seats, dude. look at the carbon and just look at the whole freaking center, all of this. Like, it's a little bit nicer than a Camaro. And the most important thing of it all is right here. This is a manual shift knob. It's like a Camaro with its dress shoes on. It, it literally is. We can't ignore the fact that this is a manual shift knob in a four-door sedan that is V8 and supercharged all from the factory, all together, that is being sold right now in 2023. If any of you guys keep up with the car market, you'll realize that there is no reason that this sedan should even exist right now, and yet it does. And of course, you know, me hearing about that, the first thing you would think is, yeah, what if you made an Exorcist variant of that? And funny enough, Hennessy has now done the exact thing. They've cracked the codes on this thing, they've unlocked it, and now they've been able to develop basically over a thousand horsepower under the hood. So the only real difference between this and the Camaro is they had to do a slightly different uh, header design because it's it's a different car. And then also they uh, changed up the fuel system a little bit, but everything else is basically the same. Um, this car is a little bit quieter than mine is because it's got their headers, but then it goes to a stock exhaust. Mine is essentially just all straight piped, but we're gonna, you know, let's fire it up. Let's hear the tone differences. <laughs> Is there, is, do you think that's valve open or is there a valve system? Oh, wait, 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 wait. don't do it yet. It sounds a lot more throatier, but it I still it. sounds fantastic. Yeah, dude, the deepness of the tone is sick. Yeah. <laughs> Wait, just try to drive it normal and watch. I want to see how you drive out of here. And then try to do it the way I say to do it. He's been telling me all day that the clutch in this thing is another different thing from the Camaro. So I'm about to find out for myself. Um, I'm just going to kind of release the clutch and see what happens. Oh, yep, the car's moving. <laughs> That's weird. Just let the pedal out. All right. <laughs> That's easy enough. If anything, it is easier, it's just different. Usually when you're, you know, getting the car rolling, you do throttle and clutch release at the same time. But this car, I guess it's just refined enough that you just gotta let out the clutch and that's it. Dude, this steering wheel 
and everything, it just feels, this is luxury. Today, we are really in a candy store. And I mean like, we have an entire track all to ourselves. Like Hennessy is just like throwing us the keys and saying, go have fun and tell us what you think of the cars. And I mean, I couldn't be any more thankful for them. This Camaro has been literally like the biggest, it's been one of the best things that's ever happened to me as far as just one singular car providing all these opportunities and awesome things. But now we're in a caddy with a thousand horsepower and we have to go to Mexico with this thing. We are, we're chilling here in Texas. I have a feeling this thing's gonna like squat oh, so much yeah. more than the Camaro is. <laughs> this car doesn't have paddles for auto rev match. Actually, I think it's a, oh, it's a button down here. Nice. Wow, GM, GM decided to finally make something a little more normal with this car. Nice. So that's cool if I, oh yeah. <laughs> the wine was wild right there. <laughs> This thing feels about as quick as the Camaro. It, it's hard because it's a little less dramatic because my Camaro just screams. It's so loud. And this car is definitely a little bit more muffled with the uh, with the stock exhaust. But the other big difference is that, yeah, the whole thing just squats. Like you just got all that like weight transfer. It's, it's a much bigger car um, and the suspension may not be as firm. So like as soon as I put my foot down on the gas, it's just, Ooh, like I feel like my whole body is just <laughs> sinking all the way back into the freaking planet of the earth. It's so comfortable though. It's so calm. It quiets down. You can road trip this thing and you would entirely forget that you're just casually burning away at eight miles per gallon as you're just, just <laughs> driving from one state to another because this thing is one gas I station mean, to another. <laughs> yeah, literally. I mean, that's the only thing is that it's still, it's still probably not very fuel economic, but man, this car is definitely a lot more practical than the Camaro is. It's just so it's so luxurious so we got a whole half a tank left and it estimates 82 miles that's a joke <laughs> i have I've, I've never seen something Usually it's supposed to be like you still got 200 miles with half a tank, but we only got 82. So we've had some time to play around with this one, and I I think it's going to be hard out of the other options that we have today that they are going to beat this because this is just so what I like. I obviously am a huge Camaro guy now, and I just love the whole powertrain. The LT4 is a magical engine that, that is capable with crazy power that is pretty much indestructible. And this thing, I mean, yeah, it literally, it feels so similar to the Camaro, even how it handles, even though it shouldn't, the Z011 LE is definitely a track focused muscle car. And this thing would probably be a lot less good at that, seeing how heavy and bigger it is. But this thing still feels like it could rip around corners. And I love the design. I love how this headlight just protrudes its way through the body of the car. These bronze wheels down here, frankly, everything. And the only issue is that all of this goodness always usually comes with a price. And that frankly is the issue is that it comes with a, a very hefty price. I mean, these these things stock are, you know, they're they're not too shy away from six figures. Add on to the Hennessy package on top of that. And it is a pretty expensive sedan, but I don't know, man. There just really is in this current year, there is nothing else that's being sold on the market that is anywhere near as crazy and as fun as something like this that is really for the enthusiasts. Let's go see what else we have next and uh, continue our little shopping spree. <laughs> have obtained another set of keys and I don't know if you guys recognize these but it has a little TRX emblem on it. Now I'm fortunate enough that I have my Gen 2 Raptor to even compare to what this will even be because I, I never drive trucks I'm not really a truck crazy guy so if I didn't even have the Raptor I probably won't even have any sort of benchmark in knowing what I'm about to get into but this is definitely going to be well leaps beyond what my stock V6 EcoBoost Raptor is because this is a Mammoth 1000. This is basically a supercharged 6.2 V6 
VA with upgraded goodness on top of even that to make it a thousand horsepower. Um, Hennessy also, they do the bumpers up here. They have their own wheels. You could get in with that with 37s. Um, you have a rear bumper, you have LED lights. This thing's huge. This is bigger than the Raptor, like physically. Dude. The separation, the amount of room that we have here. Like, dude, you're literally in a different country sitting on that <laughs> side of the car. I mean, that's the beauty about trucks, is that there's so much practical space for everything around in here. Wow, you have literally the best of both worlds. You got Alcantara, you have perforated leather, and then you have dry carbon, all in one steering wheel, with a Ram emblem. I never would have thought Ram would have gotten this far, but we have like dry carbon all around this thing. This is nuts. It's got Harman Kardon stereo. It's got a freaking tablet, <laughs> which is uh, massive. We could go, we hit TRX button and then we have our different modes. So we're gonna, we're gonna make sure she's in sport mode. Dude, that is a Hellcat, like charger. <laughs> and all I see is the roof of that. That's how freaking tall this truck is. That's like, that's not a small sedan. Oh my God, it's got a moon roof too. What the? <laughs> oh my God. Yeah, this is crazy. I'm not a Dodge guy, but today something might change. <laughs> We're at the end of their drag strip. We're in this freaking 7,000 pound behemoth. And I'm about to see what real power is like in a truck so it seems complicated but i imagine it's simple it's just foot to the floor so let's just do that and let's just see what happens if i just oh my god <laughs> holy crap <laughs> dude we thought the cadillac squatted this thing I swear I was staring at the sky. <laughs> like literally just, ooh. I guess it's one of like few Hennessy vehicles that like is all wheel drive. Yeah. They kind of, they like to work on rear wheel drive things. So, you know, for them to build something with this much power, but all four wheels can get it off the line like that, that this really is like the launch specialist of all of their cars. What the? Oh my God. <laughs> Dude, this thing will literally walk like Mustangs, freaking Ferraris. This will, <laughs> you could be in your Porsche on the freeway and you would just get absolutely freaking destroyed by this dinosaur. So all Dodge cars with the paddles have a feature where if you hold down the minus paddle, it'll shift to the lowest gear it can. So try it real quick. Yep. No! Oh! <laughs> Dude, holy, whoa! That's oh. a lot of torque. Yeah. That's, I mean, it's utilizing all like 900 foot pounds of it mm -hmm. right there. I would say the main thing that just sticks out to me about this thing is just thinking about all the cars that you could walk being in something this outlandish and huge and unsuspecting. This thing squats unlike anything else. You have a whole moonroof for the back passengers right here to probably stargaze as you squat and everyone is forced to stare at the sky. <laughs> the fuel range check for this car. This one is topped off, so it's totally full, but we only have 242 miles of range. Now to keep in mind, my Raptor gets awful gas mileage even with the EcoBoost V6, but that at least when you're full, you have around 500 miles of range. So either this A has a much smaller gas tank, which I think is very unlikely, or B, this is just what happens when you have a Hennessy built V8. So it's definitely not something that anyone should really be caring about if they're actually buying one of these, but it's fascinating. We're gonna be doing the fuel MPG comparison tests on all of these Hennessy cars. on the 1,000 horsepower list. Right here, SRT, baby. Now, to me, personally, this is actually kind of interesting because I have never been in a Challenger Charger of any sort. And this is what we got right here. We have their uh, SRT Hellcat package. And now this car is essentially the mammoth that we previously experienced, but just in a different body, a lot more planted, probably a lot more ready to go, and rear wheel drive, but it's the exact same powertrain. I mean, it's gonna be my first experience really in a proper Dodge sports car. Not as crazy bougie as they make the TRX, uh, perforated leather right there. You got some 
some some plastics. This is <laughs> see this is this is why I'm not really a Dodge guy. I feel like you know the interior is it's still set back a couple years for for what it is. But everything aside, I mean this thing this thing's massive. Like this is a freaking SUV, wide fenders. very instant like yeah. the throttle response is right there so you can kind of like wrap it yeah and i don't know that was very satisfying and of course i instantly heard the belt of the supercharger up there kind of whine i mean i have a feeling this is going to be a whiny boy this thing feels like the size of my raptor just lower on the ground like literally what i see in front of me and how much car i know is also like behind back there as well this thing is freaking huge Okay, I might understand the Hellcat magic just a little bit, even from that. <laughs> Dude, this thing's funny, man. It's got too much power. I just can't even do it. Oh my god. Where's Nelson? There we go. Now we're hooked. <laughs> oh my god, it's so fast. Dude, this is fun. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> we were just spinning the whole time! Dude, I looked back and there was just tire smoke. Dude, oh I, I like I I get it man. Like Me too. honestly. <laughs> this is this is a comedic car. Let's okay. see. Can Jack Ultra Motive be the stick today? <laughs> oh, it freaking it tried to cut power on me. Did it? Yeah, we were getting a good slide in. No, it's cutting it. Is it? No, it's cutting it. It's cutting it. It's cutting it, dude. Oh, okay, we gotta look at this up. <laughs> How to drift Hellcat. <laughs> Did we break this one? Uh, we broke its capacity of fuel. <laughs> we ran out of gas already. Well, apparently we've uh, ran out of gas on the Hellcat. You know, we've been comparing the uh, fuel tanks of these Hennessy cars. This one couldn't even pass the reading test. I mean, yeah. whatever it's at now, it it's literally, seem. it's empty. I don't know what the full capacity is, but I imagine it's not that good. No. But um, yeah, it won't, uh, <laughs> we can't get on it anymore, but. That's at least a, a physical conclusion to uh, to this thing. Honestly, it is fun. I, I understand them now. I understand why they're notorious. And I also can live with it not being a manual because for me, I'm just kind of a every American muscle car needs a manual transmission kind of guy. But honestly, these things with paddles are super fun. They're playful and it's just comedic. It's a very comedic four-door sedan. I, yeah, I can't even, re you, could put, you could have four people in there after with what we're doing. What would you say about it? I think it's fun. It's worth a certain amount, but yeah, for that value, it's fun. Yeah, we gotta get this thing out of here. What's going on here? Got the the pink. They're always yellow. Got the pink on this one. Average MPG is 9.5. That's lovely. <laughs> it's honestly higher than I'd expect. <laughs> <laughs> Quick side quest car. They gave me the keys to their new dark horse. Now this does not have any Hennessy upgrades on it yet. And this car also is sadly missing a third pedal. So it is an automatic dark horse. But I mean, this car is fresh. It comes with basically an IMAX theater on the inside as your screens, as you see down there, there's the automatic shifter. The color is by far the biggest highlight. I believe it's called Blue Ember, but um, you can see the orange flake, the orange pearlescence that sparkles and contrasts into the dark blue. And it is absolutely surreal. I mean, I think this is really what I would want if I were to have this car, because you get to be stealthy at night, but in the daytime, you get to be a little bit, a little bit hot boy, a little flashy right there. So we have the keys, same keys as you get in basically any other Ford, you just got Mustang back there. And um, you have remote start, and then we also have, I mean, we're able to rev it. So Zach's looking that up right now. And apparently you... Oh! Yeah. There's 
no one in the car. What? <laughs> did the car do all the revving? Yes. Or did you, okay, yeah. but you didn't like, yeah, so you don't modulate the revving no. from the key, right? No, okay, yeah. it just like is programmed do to do like times. three revs. What the? There ain't anyone in there. <laughs> this is freaking, this is so weird. Apparently you can do it nine times before you have to. Before the engine blows up. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Let's see how long this gear shift changes. Just, just watch when I click it and then listen for the actual car. <laughs> Dude, that was like more than a full second, man. <laughs> that is unacceptable transmission behavior. Better. Alright, better. It gets better as I go, but that that one too, man. That needs some work. I'm telling you, if I had a true thing -lang right here, I'd be able to make that better myself. Right. So we have some company joining us as we're in the dark horse. And we're gonna see how that mammoth holds up next to this. It thing. is literally Dude, a it's mammoth. So, it's so large, it's like cross traffic alert. This Bro, car is camera, freaking the, out. The, 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 the truck is just a massive. It's just taking up the whole yeah. thing. <laughs> all right, so um, I don't know what really I can do here. I'm gonna just actually leave this and drive. I'm gonna leave the car yeah, to do you all should. of this. Yeah. Even though this Mustang doesn't have any Hennessy things done to it, it's still a brand new high-end Ford Mustang. And that's a freaking truck. It's a dinosaur. Like, there really shouldn't be any reason why I should lose here, but I have this weird feeling that I am. car couldn't even chase it down. <laughs> that was good. Fair chop. <laughs> Dude, I couldn't even like reel you in. I was just hanging along back there. <laughs> yeah. This car doesn't even have the Hennessy upgrades and yet it's got eight miles of range left. Every single thing here is awful on gas mileage. We have one special treat that I did not even know was gonna happen on this journey down here, but it involves Hennessy's most special vehicle. Right here is the Venom F5. Actually, this particular one is a very special F5 in itself. This is number one, and uh, we are going to get a ride along in what is probably gonna be the craziest vehicle I've ever experienced in my life up until now. This thing has 1800 wheel horsepower. It weighs a thousand pounds less than my Camaro does. So it's literally a go-kart with, you know, a rocket strap behind it. Oh boy. Oh, instant. Holy crap. Now there's nothing blocking the exhaust of this car. These things come straight pipe right out of Hennessy. That chop. Yeah. That is nuts. So I take it you're pretty familiar with these things. Yeah. <laughs> this is my first day on the job, actually. Uh, <laughs> I've never driven really fast, so I feel like we'll figure it out. Yeah, we'll we'll figure it out somehow, right? Yeah. The decision of having me inside one of these has been so last minute that I my brain can't even process together what's about to happen because I really have not ridden in anything that is anywhere near close to what this is going to be. I'm just excited. <laughs> That was, um, that was frightening in every single way, and I don't know why that is allowed on public roads, to be honest. Like, it was frightening out there on their track, and I just had the realization that, like, you could be on the freeway in what I was in. 
That makes no sense whatsoever. We came here browsing three cars. We have the Blackwing, we have the Mammoth right here, and then we have the Hellcat right over there. All thousand horsepower. Um, if I had to choose one, probably the most well-rounded, all-complete car for me is the Blackwing. And part of it is to be expected with coming from being a Camaro owner, and that is kind of the most equivalent similar car. But in another way, I feel like it is the nicest in quality, the most luxurious. It also corners really well and kind of does everything that you really need it to. The Hellcat is just fun. This is the most like a toy. This is the car that I really want that track to have because, oh my gosh, you give me this plus their track, I could be entertained for hours on hours out there with either just sliding, doing burnouts, doing launches, and just doing pulls in that thing. It's dumb. To be all honest, last on the list would probably be this package just for me, just because I'm not the biggest of truck guys and you know it's as insane as it is to embarrass people on the freeway with this car you can only do that so many times when you're out there so you know i'll probably for now be sticking to my uh, crazy runs and something a little more smaller and then as the wild card you have the dark horse over there which that just needs a different transmission in my manual driven opinion they're gonna freaking beefen that up next and we may or may not return for when that's all done, for when they also have some Corvettes in the works and some other crazier stuff. So for now, we're gonna leave here empty-handed and we may or may not uh, come back, but it's been literally a dream. It's been the craziest of days out here in Texas. So I'm gonna end it on that note. It's hard to capture on camera, but this is probably the most panoramic backup camera that I've ever seen. Look at that. We're watching a movie right now. You can see everything. You ain't gonna miss any sort of parking curb with this backup camera. Beautiful. <laughs>